Hey guys and welcome to this brand new episode on Google Cloud. Today I am going to show you how to create speech to text client in Spring Boot. But before we get into the actual source code, let's just go through this Spring Cloud GCP website again. So we have already seen this page wherein we came to know that there are various starter projects which are offered by the Spring Framework in order to integrate Google Cloud project. But if you want to integrate the artificial intelligence projects which are offered by the Google Cloud, then in that case you will find that there are no ready-made packages which are made or which are made available by the Spring Boot project. So in that case, how would you able to leverage the Spring features and instantiate a Google client? And that's exactly what we are going to explore in this video. So I'll just quickly jump to the Eclipse. So I created a file called as speech to text controller at this point of time there are no content inside this particular file. We'll just start adding the details to it. So the very first thing is that unlike the storage APIs that we are seeing, Spring Boot project is not going to auto wire any dependency with respect to the speech to text client. But there is one helper object available and that object is called as credentials provider. So let me just instantiate or let me create an instance of the credentials provider. So simply declare a private variable with the type as credentials provider. Okay, it seems my Eclipse is giving an error. So I'll say credentials provider and then I will name this variable as credentials provider. Then we are going to create a setter method so that Spring Boot project can inject the dependency. Let's call it as set credentials provider. Okay, we are good. Now, once this particular dependency has been injected, we are supposed to create an object of speech settings. And in order to hold that speech settings, we are going to create another instance variable. So speech settings. And I'm going to name this particular variable as settings is equal to null. Now this object will be instantiated in the post initialize method or the post construct method rather. So I will use the annotation post construct and let's just create a method for that. Now let me initialize the settings variable. The settings variable can be initialized using the builder which is available inside the speech settings. So speech settings dot new builder dot set credentials provider. So as I said, Spring Boot will automatically inject the credentials provider for this particular file. And this is the crux of creating a helper object in order to instantiate the speech to text APIs. Again, you don't have to manually read the JSON file or the credentials. Everything will be taken care of by the Spring Boot. So you'll see that at this point of time, uh, we have the build method ready. So now that our build method is ready, uh, we need to either declare the throws clause or we need to add the try catch block. I would rather add the throws clause. Let me just leave it as IO exception. And then we'll get inside our get mapping wherein we are going to actually invoke the Google speech to text API and get the relevant text. So I'll start instantiating the required objects. So to begin with, we need to first create the speech client and speech client is actually a resource. So we need to create it inside the try block. So speech client is uh, equal to speech client. So there is a factory method. So let me just pass the settings to it. Now it seems that the speech client is actually throwing an error. So we are supposed to declare the throws clause. So let me just add that throws clause immediately. And this time I will just use the generic exception class. So now we need to construct an object of recognition config. So I'm going to create a recognition config dot builder. Uh, let's just name this instance as builder and then use the recognition config dot new builder dot set encoding. 
so this is actually setting the encoding of lossless format for the audio so i'll say audio encoding dot flac now since our builder object is ready we can actually go ahead and call the additional methods on top of this the first thing is the language for this particular audio and in my case since i have a sample of french language i am going to specify the language code as french in case you have english then you are supposed to specify the language as en hyphen us so speech to text api has a lot of features one of them is identifying the automatic punctuations at the right position so we are going to leverage that so i'll say set enable automatic punctuation true the next is you can also enable word specific offset and this is very important so let me just enable that as well so set enable word time offset true that looks sufficient for our recognition config we need to also set the model for our builder so builder dot set model and this time we are just going to make use of the model as default let me just go back to the google cloud project so if i'll just go to this cloud speech to text page you will find that there are a lot of information which has been presented about the product and also it talks about the models which are available so you have four different models you can go through this site and understand what each one of them does in our case we are making use of the default model i'll just switch back to editor or the eclipse and let me just press enter and this time i'm just going to create the recognition config so we are done with the builder and now we need to create the actual config object so builder dot build this will give us an instance of recognition config and the next thing is actually giving the details about the audio in our case the audio file is actually uploaded on the google cloud storage let me just quickly show you that so i'll just go to chrome and if i'll switch the tab you will see that i am already inside the google cloud platform and i have also opened up the google cloud storage browser so you will see that there is a file called as ffextract.flag so this is the file which i have extracted from one of the video and i use fmmpeg in order to extract this file now for the time being let's go back to eclipse i will just open that and we'll create an object for the recognition audio so recognition audio and i need to name this particular variable as audio again we have a builder available over here so i'm just going to make use of that recognition audio dot new builder we need to specify the url for our audio and in my case since it has been uploaded on the google cloud project i am just going to specify the url of our google cloud storage my bucket name is carbon rider and the file name is ffextract.flac let's call a build method on top of that this will create an object of recognition audio and we can use this object in order to call the speech apis now there is one more thing which i need to mention now if your audio duration is more than 1 minute then in that case you are supposed to call the asynchronous api so speech to text come with two apis one of them is the synchronous api and the second one is the asynchronous api so as i said if your audio duration is more than 1 minute you are supposed to call the asynchronous api otherwise you will get an error at the run time so we are going to make use of the future apis so i'll just use operation future and inside this we are going to get an object of long running recognize response so long running recognize response and the second thing is the metadata about the recognition so i'm just going to use the class as a long running recognize metadata let's just name this instance as response and then we are going to actually invoke the speech apis so in our case we have already created an object called as speech or rather it is called as client my mistake client dot long running recognize as a sync this requires two objects the configuration and the audio 
and we have already created those objects. Let me just maximize the editor so that we can see all the details. And now that we have constructed the response object, we should be good to extract the actual text from the audio file. But since this is a future object, we will have to wait for its completion. And to do that, simply use the while loop and check the status of this response. So that can be done using response.is done. If it is not completed, then in that case, we can actually invoke the sleep method on our thread. Let's just pause for 10 seconds. And once this operation is complete, we are going to get the list of speech recognition. So I will just create an instance of list of speech recognition result. And then I will just name this variable as speech results is equal to response dot get dot get result list looks good what we'll do is that whatever transcription that we have received as a response of this particular api we are going to append that to a string builder and finally we'll return that as a response to our rest api so string builder transcription is equal to new string builder Let's iterate over the speech results that we have received. So I'm going to create a speech recognition result object result colon speech results. This will give us the various results. Let's go ahead and retrieve each one of these result and the object is speech recognition alternative. Let me name this variable as alternative and what you'll do is that you will just invoke the get alternative list method on the result object and you need to pick up the very first object. Now it is not mandatory that you should pick up the first object. You can actually check the confidence score and then based on that you can take the decision. But the very first result is actually with the highest confidence score. So let me update the transcription variable. So we'll call the append method on top of that. And our alternative variable has a method called as get transcript, which returns the transcription recognized for an audio. You can also explore various other methods which are available inside this alternative object that will basically give you the word time offset that we have configured and you can build your data structure in order to store that word time information. Right now, I'm not going to use that information. So I'll just ignore that. Let's go ahead and create an object of message. As we have seen in the previous video, we have a class called as message. So I'm just going to use that. And we'll return this message. Let me set the content of this message as message dot set content. And I will use the string builder that we have created. Let me also modify the return type of our REST API. Let me save the file and I'm just going to start our server. This will take a while. Now, since our server has been started, I will go to Google Chrome and then let me hit the URL localhost colon 8080 slash speech. So we'll wait for a while in order to get the uh, actual transcription from the audio. Let me just go to Eclipse and verify if there is any problem or not. So since this is a long running operation, it is definitely going to take a time. I will advise you that you should not do the online translations. Rather, it is recommended to create a batch job, which will actually get the reference of the audio file and then it will invoke the Google Cloud APIs. Let's just go back to Google Chrome and see. Okay, that's great. And congratulations, we just learned how to invoke speech to text client API using the Spring Boot project. We realized that there was no starter project which was available. But with the Spring Boot, we could able to instantiate the credentials provider, which is a generic object available in the Google Cloud integration. So with this, we wrap up the video and I will see you soon in the next video with yet another API. Till then, take care and build something.